YouTube served me up a hot banger of a video, and I thought I would uh, do a live react with uh, with all of you. So, hope to be enjoying the video. Why the Starlink Mini destroys amateur radio from uh, Grunt Proof. Now, titles like these are all the rage right now, and a lot of it is thanks to things like VidIQ, which you can see on the right side of my screen, or TubeBuddy, or you know all the other stuff, uh, and just AI title generation. Yeah, we get recommended title things on our videos and so we'll sometimes you know, some creators will post these kind of like kind of clickbaity type title and then you watch the video and the video is on topic it's just it's it's not really getting to the point of destroying amateur radio and i'm wondering if this is one of those videos so let's take a look uh, from gunt proof here so we got five repeaters programmed in this area and on this mountaintop, I know for sure I can hit four of that. So that's that's good, <laughs> right? Okay, so a line of sight radio. It's only going to communicate to that horizon, basically, that you can see maybe a little bit beyond that. He's at a good vantage point. You can see all the way in the background. See those hills in the background? You can potentially talk to someone on the other side over on those hills with that just that rubber duck antenna. So, okay, we got a radio. Looks like a, a boof wang. Um, so four repeaters. And we've got no luck. So, all right. Well, he's he's not holding it, you know, like you should, right? Actually, vertical. He's kind of at a, a cant. I'm assuming he tried this, though, right? I'm assuming he tried it. it. Looks like it's a stock antenna, so hasn't changed things there. Not using a Yagi that would increase his distance, and and what it would do is focus his RF in the direction that the Yagi was pointing. So, those are all things we could try. Kind of screwed on the radio side. We have no. All right, now we've got a Pelican case, much larger Pelican case that uh, he is now going to talk about, I'm guessing his Starlink setup. Not only a good backup, but uh, which has now become my preferred method. 20 pounds of gear here to uh, to replace the Baofeng. Starlink Roam or mobile, which I've had for about a year now and using the crap out of it. By the way, you know I'm not a fan of Elon Musk before all the politics. had nothing to do with that. Just not a fan, right? Not a fan. But I, I thoroughly have enjoyed the time using Starlink. We've used it uh, at the HRCC campout. We have used it on a POTA. Actually, I take that back. We used it at Field Day. Worked great for the live stream on Field Day. I, I don't really have any complaints against Starlink as far as, well, from its use, its technical use. I won't get into the satellite stuff right now. And it yeah, hasn't failed once. The main benefit to this hasn't failed him yet is is really the point. Uh, those satellites go down, the service can be interrupted, and you have no guarantees that it'll be around forever. Well, we assume, um, but you know, a, a solar storm can take out satellites and has taken out satellites. As you can, you can set it up anywhere. There's no real setup. Nice use of B-roll. I like the radio. Well, there is, there is setup because you're seeing it. <laughs> he's got to plug it into a router of some kind. That like, looks like what he's doing. And he's got to have some kind of off-grid power solution. So there is setup. Video, there's really no... Wait, and there's also setup because you have to point it at the space. You have to point it. I think it's a southern exposure that it needs. You have to use the phone app to align it because it is, it is a satellite antenna. No limited range. You don't have to type in a whole bunch of numbers, do a whole bunch of buttons. All you it is simple. That is true. The app makes it simple. You got to do is get power to this thing. You can activate your subscription in the middle of nowhere. That's also good, which I mean, you'd expect it would have that. If it didn't, people would be pissed. And in like two minutes, you're on the internet. And again, unlike with the radio, you can talk to exactly who you want to not have to talk to somebody hanging out in a basement somewhere calling people. So I have yeah, I mean that that's true, right? Um who's ever listening is who who you're going to get and if you don't have a scheduled time for operation then yeah. Now, we're talking about a radio, a two-way radio versus the internet, right? Uh Starlink is giving you internet via a complex network of not just this phased array system which is what this works on, which is a, a cool antenna system. It's it's a really cool antenna system if you look into it. The Starlink constellation of satellites 
and then the ground stations that take that data and get it to the internet and the multitudes of wires and computers and people that all make that work right a baofeng requires two people each with baofengs that's it I have everything I need in this kit, but one way I power this. Again, 20 pounds of gear. Cigarette lighter. Some yeah. Some people call it a DC output. I call it's it a cigarette lighter too. It's got all USB things, but it also has a 110 plug. So that'll accept the standard Starlink plug that comes with it. Another thing we can do is simply a high powered, high output battery bank. This one is an anchor. It's like a 20. I also have that battery bank. It's it's actually really good. I that was a recommendation from K M R D. Highly highly uh, recommend that battery bank as well. It's it's pretty cool. Twenty four thousand. It's not going to run it for very long though. I don't think. And milliamp hour. When we used it in the field, Starlink will take a pretty wide range of voltages. So we were plugging it straight into bioenergy batteries, and it was working. Uh, don't know if you're supposed to do that. Put. It works so fine. We can plug that in. Plug All right. We've got power. Okay, don't power. Really have to angle this a certain way. Uh, inside the bed of a truck is probably not the way to go unless he's got like a straight view out the back of the bed. But notice there's a tree there, and that tree could obscure the horizon. You generally want open spaces for the satellites as they're passing to be in clear space. So I would I would get this away from the truck or on top of the cab. Right up I've done in that. the sky, and that works fine for the most part, straight up. You got a clear sky. You don't have too many trees around. It's not you, straight up. It'll be fine. Uh, so depending on where you live, but up. I think most of the time Let's it's see not in the states. How long it takes? I bet my Wi-Fi is already running. So there we go. Now we have our signal app. We got text message, whatever you want. I can All right. Got the internet. Type a Mayday message out there on YouTube, uh, freaking comment section, and <laughs> some of you guys will reach out to me. I've done that is a completely valid uh, part of your PACE plan, right? We talk about PACE plan, primary, alternate, contingency, and emergency. Those are supposed to be four different solutions for communication, not just one Baofeng with four repeaters programmed into it. A Starlink could be a part of your layered emergency communications plan. I just wouldn't say this is destroying amateur radio, but maybe I'm waiting for a hook. We're about halfway through the movie, or the movie. We're about halfway through the video done tests like that where i just say hey just want to see who's out there and who will answer and people hey. hit me up pretty quickly all right so i'm not bashing the radio world sir your title is why the starlink mini destroys amateur radio you're not bashing the amateur radio world me thinks uh, ai title uh was used here or just you know something something catchy for the kids right ham still has a pretty good freaking standard purpose uh yeah is okay expensive it is pretty it's expensive. Got... you know <laughs> it's really expensive in fact let's let's see what well, let's see let's see starlink all right what's it gonna cost me service type uh what do i want okay residential 120 if you want light i want roaming you know uh but i don't want homes so let's go to view all plans Rome. Uh, Rome Unlimited. 50 gigs is not bad for $50 a month. Okay. $165 a month for Unlimited. That's if, I guess, if I'm hanging out live streaming like crazy or something. So what do I need? Uh, I need the standard kit is $175. That's not bad. What's it taking me to? Ah, $499 with taxes. Uh, and I want the mini which is $4.99. If I get a refurb, okay, that drops it down to $2.99. I'd probably get a refurb. In fact, I'm probably going to buy one of these if Amazon doesn't come out with their internet before uh, before the HRCC live stream next April, May time frame. Just to be done with it, I guess I'm tired of fighting and I just want the internet. But uh, yeah, mini, let's go with standard. Standard's kind of big. Let's go with uh, 50 gigs, unlimited. Standard kit is $175. What's the performance kit? Uh, okay, well, we're not doing $2,000. Standard, interesting, mini. It says best for latest speeds in all weather conditions, best for portable and low power. We go with the low power application. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, you can go cheap, get the refurb, $299. 50 bucks a month ain't bad, you know, because you could just turn it off, I believe. You can just in the app turn it off. So, okay, fine.
lot cheaper. I've seen guys get a year package for $99 with the equipment, and then they just need to buy some. Tell me where to get one of those tools. The $20 a month freaking package, which is like, I don't know. What $20? Data maybe, and that's really all oh, I'm going to use it okay. for. I'm not watching so he's he's literally using it for light internet right purposes. So he's he's going to take this and just you know use it to to get his signal chat, for instance. Okay, fine. I'd use it for live streaming, but hey, we got different. Uh, that's, that's a different pace plan. And, you know, freaking porn or high def uh, <laughs> videos while I'm out. Okay, this We're is putting out 20, 21 to twenty three watts. So I don't know. Do the math on that and. It'll tell you on the device. Thousand milliamp hours, like that device has a meter on it. It'll tell you so what, just I how much time it thinks. Say it and ask like, "Well, you still carry your radio?" Yeah. Again, I'm not bashing radio. You can't make a title like that. I'm here for the title. I'm reacting to the title. Why the Starlink Mini destroys amateur radio, sir? Uh, sir. <laughs> I hear you though. I, I I hear you. So far, I'm not I'm not angry at this guy. He seems like an okay guy. It still has. Very many uses, walking around the homestead, sure. out here screwing around, having a good old time. Me. By the way, you can see those summits in the background, right? Uh, down off of his left shoulder, right off his uh, side of his elbow. If uh, you had a Yagi, you could hit that, right? With the with the boom with with the boomstick, right? Give it the boomstick and then throw the boof wang behind it. Uh, yeah, an elk antenna, an arrow antenna, even onto a Baofeng, you'd be able to hit that. We could hit the ISS with a Baofeng, right? Come on. The family and the neighbors uh, are our primary when we're out doing things is almost always the radio. Right, because it's a self-contained thing that emits and receives RF and demodulates it for FM. It's And it fits in the palm of your hand, right? Convenience-wise, the handheld radio is going to be that above Starlink, right? We're all on the same page here. And so, yeah, we always have radios on us. We have extra ones on all the vehicles. So somebody just has to just look in this freaking box, put it together, put the battery on, and there you go. Now, Shout out to the $18 Baofeng. Uh, there will be a link in the video description to check those out. Yeah, buy like four of them and keep them all programmed the same you don't even really have to keep them charged maybe just label them so you know those are the standard issue throwaway bow fangs and then if you need to give it to somebody you can in an emergency totally doable you might want to consider some you know off-grid charging options but yeah because if I'm four hours away from somebody out in the mountains I'm not programming repeaters all across half the country trying to talk like this is an incredibly important point, okay? Very important point. There are radios that will do this for you, right? Like GPS enabled radios, like you can, it's like an ICOM, right? Any of the ICOM handhelds, you, you give it an SD card with like North American repeaters in it and we'll use GPS to, to jump you around based off your location. You can literally scan based off of location within the ICOM radio. So that, that feature does, it ex does exist, but he's, he's not wrong that if you wanted like coast to coast communication like on a road trip and you wanted to do that facilitated by repeaters, you would have to program those repeaters. That's what makes amateur radio something that is there is a barrier to entry because you're doing it right. You, the amateur radio licensed individuals, the one that's responsible for this stuff. I find that cool. I find that like, you know, we're a bit of a club and it's not a club because we're trying to exclude you. It's a club because we're like the type of people that do that. Right. You know, it's a self-excluding club, I guess. Like this, when we've kind of modernized and it's almost always phone. So I'm driving on my road trips, you know, and I'm checking in. I just pull up my phone, do the voice message real quick. I know it's going to hit Starlink, hit the space and do all the stuff out there and come out to whoever's phone I'm talking to. Different uses for different tools. I, again, I want to reiterate and hopefully I've driven this home. There is a cadre of human beings, human capital, human intelligence, power, miles of, of copper, computers, devices, all in that case that he made sounds very simple. There are a million things that can break down in the chain of that point-to-point -point communication. Satellites can go down. Not even the satellite. The ground station could go down. There's a number of things that could fail that could cause Starlink or any mode of communication, including just mobile data, your home internet to go down. We've seen it before. We will see it again. That's why you need to have a pace plan. And that doesn't mean we drop one or the other. That's right. Uh, we, I agree. we have seen the SEER challenge. We use the Starlink um, almost exclusively with the good guy side just talking through signal on Starlink and out here. 
SEER training is like search and evade and rescue, right? Can you imagine if you're you're you you are you are you are downed pilot and on your backpack is just a Starlink Mini and you're just huck humping <laughs> out there trying to evade? Where you get into any one of these deep gulches, this is dead. You're you're not talking to any. You don't have to be there, but yes, he's right. That's just understanding how RF works, by the way. Anybody, so unless a dude. Also, with all the RDF um, equipment, the crocking and stuff, the bad guys were using, this was a no-go. You can RDF Starlink. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm very confident of that fact. I know it's probably highly directional. Now you give me an idea for a video. I'm kind of curious. So they were not RDFing our freaking signal text messages that we sent out. So, again, different tools for different... But you are using your cell phone which I'm not assuming, not assuming, but you would have to do a bit of work to remove the digital footprint of where you are GPS, right? And so if uh, there are a group of three letter agencies perhaps that have access to software that can use it to get uh, whole internet data or cell phone information, Location is given, I believe. You'd have to do some work there. That's uh, coming off the top of my head, though, so don't know the full vulnerabilities in that space. For jobs, mobile emergency comms in a box. Too easy. Uh One layer of emergency comms. I'll see you. The grunt is not crooked. The camera is very crooked. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'm actually going to go watch the Seer Challenge now. I think that's kind of cool. So Grunt seems like a guy, a nice guy. I literally clicked on this to watch. I, I literally listened to the first part of that where he was talking about repeaters. And then I'm like, I'm just going to record this because this seems like something fun to talk about. It does Starlink destroy radio? No, because they're fundamentally different types of services, right? And yes, one is a paid for service and the other is an FCC service that you have to have a license for. I don't think Starlink destroys GMRS or FRS or CB or MERS or any other mushtastic, right? I don't think it destroys any of those things. But also, none of those things are really providing the internet either. Yes, I can get my email over amateur radio. I can do that. And in some cases, it will leverage the internet at, the, at whomever I hit, maybe outside of a disaster area. That is a truism. That's a true statement. But I don't think either one destroys each other. And I think this zero-sum game of, well, this is the only way to go. I think if you say ever in the sentence of, of like kind of getting people on the side that you believe in, this is the only way to do something, it's probably very naive or short-sighted. I don't think Grun's saying that, although his title did make me think he was. So that's where I'll leave it. Go check out the video. I'll drop it in the video description. I'm going to go check out his Seer series. Seer series! And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Like, comment, subscribe if you have not. And I'll talk to you soon. 73.